So here is a um, stamp collection update video. Uh, my stamp collection has grown since the last time. So I want to show you what I have and some of these things I really like. I don't know if I showed you last time this fantastic Harry Potter set. Um, oh man. Every panel is different. We have, um, and I believe each one is for a different movie. So like these are all scenes from the first movie when they're really young. Um, there's Dobby, obviously, from the second movie. Or I may be wrong, because I thought that the, um, Buckbeak was in the third movie. So, uh, okay, I take that back. I don't think these are, I think this is just a mix. But, uh, beautiful set. Harry Potter, United States Postal Service. And I have um, the Star Wars 30th Anniversary uh, May the Stamps Be With You sets uh, that were, this was a, um, a freebie. With a, it's basically a first day cover that was given out um, at Arlington Heights, Illinois Stamp Station. And it included one stamp with the first day cancellation cover. And it's just a very... Um, it's this specific thing that was um, marketing the, the Star Wars release. So it was just a, a fun freebie. And then I got this one with Han and Chewie. That one with Next Wing Fighter. So these are just cool. Each one has a, a, a first day cancellation cover on it. Um, here is the Hot Wheels set. And we see some of the classic Hot Wheel cars like Purple Passion... Twin Mule, The Rocket by Baby, Bone Shaker, and you know, I don't know if you've heard of World's Smallest Toys, but they released World's Smallest versions of some of these the classic Hot Wheel cars. Mary just bought me this one, this first moon landing set, and I really like it. It is on, it, they're foil, metallic stamps, and alternating with a very beautiful photo of Neil Armstrong and another photo of the moon um, in this beautiful metallic. And if you hear something in the background, that's Fiona, my cat, on her scratching post. She loves to do that when I'm shooting a video. <laughs> First moon landing, July 20th, 1969. Absolutely love this set. You ha if you if you do buy this set, I the only advice I'll give is keep it flat. It will curl in humidity really easily because of, I think because of the metallic paper that's used. I bought this in Italy, and it's the Pope when Benedict was still the Pope when I was there. This was one of my trips. I mean, I was also there when Francis was Pope, but this time I got it because um, I don't think these were Vatican stamps. These are Italian stamps, I believe. But um, I still thought they were really cool. There. This is my collection of um, nature stamps. I still don't have the complete collection, so every now and then I, I look on the internet to see if I can find a page I'm missing. But this is the Sonoran Desert, and it just, each stamp is hidden in, in the picture. So, like, if I take this out, you'll see. You can see where they're, they're cut out. And each stamp is an animal. Like a turtle. Um, and then on the back, it tells you what everything is. Whether it's uh, an animal or a plant. Like, for example, 23 is a woodpecker, a Gila woodpecker. See? And then number 33 is a saguaro cactus. There's a little little bunny, a lizard, scorpion, snake, field mouse. I really do love this. I have always thought these are some of the most creative and beautiful stamps ever put out. It's Nature of America series. And this is actually the first one. So I've been trying to get the entire set. I'm working on it. And I need to probably get a move on because they're getting harder and harder to find. 
This is uh, the second, and it's the Pacific Coast Rainforest. And you can see where they're cut out on the back. You know, there's thrush, Douglas squirrel, dwarf organ grape, cutthroat trout, rough skin newt, tailed frog, just all kinds of cool uh, Pacific Coast critters and plants. And I love that cutaway where you can see the water, the cut, the 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 shoreline, the trees. Number three is the Great Plains Prairie, and I really love this one. What I particularly love about this is you can see the little prairie dogs, um, the cutaway of the earth, and you can see them living underground, but you also see that there's a snake living there, and there's insects and, and small rodents. Ants. There's a storm gathering here. Ducks flying. Buffalo, little field owls. I really love this one a lot. The Great Plains Prairie, number three. Black tailed prairie dog. It also identifies things that aren't stamps. Like, for example, if you're wondering what this odd number this is, that is. Um, Harvester ants. See? They didn't make a stamp for them. You hear the thunder? Really crazy weather tonight. This, so, I'm missing number four. And this is number five, the Arctic Tundra. Another one I really, really like. I need to find number four before it's impossible to find. See the, the lichens and the moss on the rocks? Really like that. The wolf, the bear, you see the water, arctic tundra, so there's muskoxes, caribou, and then in the back you can see glaciers. Really, really love these sets. But I do have number six, Pacific Coral Reef. Oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. Look at sea anemone and the clownfish living in it. Um, sea turtles. It kind of reminds me of Finding Nemo. That's a little bit like a dory fish right there. Oh wait, that's the dory fish right there. They're um, surgeon fish. Is that what they're called? So dory was a surgeon fish. I didn't know that. An enemy fish. Clown trigger fish is number four. So, that's a clown trigger fish, and these are called an enemy fish. Uh, number seven is Northeast Deciduous Forest. Another beautiful set. You see the beaver dam? A bat? I mean, these are just so, I, I mean, I, I don't know if the post office has ever topped this as far as just creative and beautiful sets that I don't know. I never want to break these up. I just want to keep them. Number nine, Alpine Tundra. Uh, instead of glaciers in the background, we have snow-capped mountains. 
lichens and on the rocks. Beautiful, just beautiful artwork. So that's nine. Number 11 on Miss 10 is the Kelp Forest. And uh, it's, we've got otters and all kinds of fish. It's, uh, an aquatic forest. It's really cool. Next is number 12, the Hawaiian rainforest. Oh man, this one's pretty. I've never been to Hawaii and I would really, really love to go there. Not just to see the beaches, but to see rainforests like this. Look at the fantastic artwork. See, I, when I finish this whole set, it'll almost be like having a, a nature picture book with all the guides on the back. Oh, I got my Looney Tune stamps with Porky Pig on them. That's all, folks. Now here you have all the characters and then you got Porky on all the other stamps. This is winter sports. Uh, every now and then I like to get in the Olympic stamp sets and I and I and I had to decide what part of the Olympics do I like the most and it's the Winter Olympics. So I think most people agree that the Winter Olympics are pretty possibly the most fun to watch with the events. So I really, really liked the style of these stamps. And um it just it's just a different approach. And uh I just thought this was a really, really attractive set. Here is uh <laughs> some Garfield stamps I saved. I don't know if I have a complete set. It was the Sunday Funnies, uh, and I used a lot of them, it looks like, but I saved the car fields. But, um, and these are some classic cars, too, that I really like. These are pretty old. First class stamps. Oh, antique toys, my bad. Uh, but they are antique toy cars. Uh, do you like this one? It's American Photography. I like the Great Depression. Dorothy Elaine. Uh, Walker Evans, W. Eugene Smith, Paul Strand, James Vanderzee, Ansel Adams, Imogene Cunningham. I mean, just important photographers to know. And the good thing about collecting stamps is um, you can learn a lot. You could look at a picture, you can look at a stamp like this and be like, I want to know more about this person. And it can it sort of, um, on the back it even has like a little brief biography of, of each photographer. Houdini. Um, the famous magician, escape artist, illusionist. Um, I always think about photographing Ferris when I think about Houdini because uh, he was part of the little girls who the Cotty and Lee fairies the little girls who said that they took pictures of fairies Houdini was brought in to um, see if they were faking it or not this is just American treasures and it's John James Audubon and it's just one image of birds that he did but I still think it's a, a cool set a nice set to own and I just have it I like Audubon this is uh, baseball parks Baseball's legendary playing fields. Tiger Stadium, Detroit. Yankee Stadium. Forbes Field. Wrigley Field, of course. Fenway Park, of course. The two most famous ones in the set probably are Wrigley and Fenway. I really do like this set. And it has a little bit on the back about each one. Uh, 
and the next is Lucille Ball. And um, yeah, I have a soft spot for Lucille Ball because as, as many kids my age grew up in the 80s, there was a big I Love Lucy comeback. And uh, so we all watched I Love Lucy through the 80s. If you ever watched the movie Pretty Woman, there's a scene where they're watching I Love Lucy. And that was, to us, that was normal because that was what was on TV all the time. The Honeymooners and I Love Lucy was always showing. So I loved the one in a Lucille Ball set because it just reminds me of my childhood and having I Love Lucy on all the time. Jim Henson Muppets. Um, when I, One of my earliest memories was the Muppets being on primetime on TV, the Muppet Show, and with guests like Sammy Davis Jr. and John Denver and and so forth, and um, that was a popular primetime show, which was just kind of funny. But you, a little bit of trivia a lot of people don't know is the Muppets actually first started on Saturday Night Live. So they were actually were a bit on Saturday Night Live before they became their own show. Of course, my beloved uh, <laughs> Star Wars sheet, I think I have... Uh, two of these, but um, the Star Wars stamps, all from the the prequel trilogy and the uh, 70s and 80s trilogy. You know, we've got Boba Fett, Darth Maul, Yoda, an X-Wing, Stormtroopers, Han and Chewie, Queen Amidala, Obi-Wan, Luke, the Falcon, and the duel between Anakin and Obi-Wan, the Emperor, just uh, a really cool set, but... If that isn't enough, there's a set of just Yodas, and it's very similar to this Yoda here. It's almost like the same stamp, but they gave us a whole sheet of just Yodas. 41 cents. Superheroes. Spider-Man, Hulk. Uh, is that uh, uh, Hydro-Man? Am I right? Submariner. The Submariner. <laughs> One of the first heroes ever. Uh, the Thing, Cap Captain America, Wolverine. Is that Ele Elektra, Iron Man, Spider Woman, Silver Surfer, and then these comic covers that correspond to each figure. So this is a, a great set of Marvel superheroes. These descriptions on the back. Here's my Art of Disney Magic. Fantasia, Peter Pan, Dumbo, Aladdin, just uh, really, really beautiful Disney stamps with descriptions on the back. I really love this set. This is Polar Lights. Um, the Northern Lights and just Aurora Aus Australis, Aurora Borealis. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stamps. Make me want to go somewhere and see these in person. And descriptions on the back. Then I I try to always collect the Chinese New Year stamps, and I, I always think they're they're different every year and they're really artistic. So I have starting on this page is a set of Chinese New Year stamps. See, this with the little lanterns. And this one with the dragons, and this is with the firecrackers, and the drums. See, I, I always try to pick these up. I always think they're cool and, and unique and creative when I get them. And they always have the new animals on them, see? I'm Year of the Tiger, 1974. So I'm, but, uh, Pioneers of American Industrial Design. Look at these, cool. The camera, the phone, the radio. Monk, Peter Miller Monk. Just this, the styles we have in our appliances and our furnishings. I thought this set was really cool too. Charles Ray Eames. Kind of reminds me of Bauhaus, you know, like the functional furniture, but stylish. Was he part of the Bauhaus movement? It's post-World War II, and you can read about this on the back of the stamps, which is really cool. Modern Art in America. Um, Man Ray. 
If you really want to creep yourself out, read about Man Ray and the Black Dahlia and George Hodel. Aaron Douglas, Marcel Duchamp. Marcel Duchamp, uh, very studied him in school. Stella. Georgia O'Keeffe. I saw number five in red. Uh, Charles, I love that painting. Bill Maughan. Oh, uh, I love the Willie and Joe books. I have a lot of those cartoon books. I have to show you in another video. He was a World War II uh, comic artist, and he drew comics about World War II soldiers. He was hated by General Patton um, because he showed like the life in the the mud and everything. And those are the characters that he drew. Willie and Joe, right there. Um, this is the inverted Jenny. The upside down airplane stamps <laughs> reissued by the post office not the originals if i had six original upside down airplanes i could retire and underneath i put uh a, an environmental green stamp uh, about composting and planting trees and stuff by local and all that here's a quilt american treasures i'm missing one it looks like i used one now, one of my, uh, another one of my favorite sets, the Civil War series. I got one for each year. Each year has two stamps on it. Fort Sumter, first bull run in 1861, and then there's um, stuff about the year. And on the back, there's a brief discussion of the year. And, and the different stamps. See? Each year is like this. So you got a little Civil War history book in this collection. 1862, New Orleans, and the Battle of Antietam. I guess they did, they decided not to put Shiloh here. I thought Shiloh was a pretty big turning point in 1862. And then on the back, 1863. Of course, they're going to have Vicksburg and Gettysburg, the two major things that happened in 1863 definitely the turning point year of the civil war even though it would go on for two more years and the famous picture of confederate prisoners eighteen sixty four mobile bay and petersburg when the war started getting miserable by eighteen sixty four it turned into trench warfare, wilderness warfare, just awful things started happening. And then 1865, Five Forks and Appomattox Courthouse. Also, this was the year Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. This was the last year of the war and the beginning of Reconstruction. And signified by the rifles being put up, standed up. So here is uh, Janis Joplin. So I uh, I sent to Grace Slick, I sent her an album cover. I wanted her to autograph for me, and I included a whole bunch of these Janis Joplin stamps. And she sent it back to me, and she had used all of them. So that was really cool. Um, and it looks like an album. See? I really like this set a lot. And on the back, another set that looks like an album, and it's Jimi Hendrix. Another great... Um, 1960s rocker both of them are i think are in the so-called 27 club because both of them passed away at the age of 27 along with mama cass uh kurt cobain um amy winehouse one of the guys in the rolling stones um here's a, another disney pixar stamp cars ratatouille Monsters Inc. No, I'm sorry, Toy Story. Up and Wally. -E. I really like the Wally -E stamps. And look at the back with that little concept art. Oh, I love this one. This is my Star Trek set. You've got the Enterprise, the the Insignia, the Transporter, and the Live Long and Prosper sign. I really love this set. Um this is one of my favorite ones. 
Try to be a rainbow in someone's cloud by this is a Maya Angelou set. And uh, Maya Angelou is a professor and an author. She wrote a book called Why, Why the Cage Bird Sings. Um, or I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, which I read in college. Um, the USS Missouri battleship. Just a history stamp, and I like the artwork a lot. Um, here's a set of stamps that I picked up in Italy. And I got them in the Vatican. Yeah, these are Vatican stamps. Uh, they're from Mother Teresa, and the interesting thing, see, Vatican stamps are special because the Vatican City is its own little country, and they have their own euros and their own stamps. So when I was in the Vatican, I got my, I tried to get some sets of stamps and some euros that were, that all the Vatican euros have the Pope on them. So this is Mother Teresa stamps from the Vatican. And there is a stamp store. There's a postal store in the Vatican you can go to and buy these stamps. But there, that's the only place you can get them. And this is another set of Vatican stamps I got. And it's the anniversary of the birth of Mozart. See? Cita del Vaticano. The Cita del Vaticano. And these are pretty in this nice folder. And finally, I have my big sheet of state stamps. Each one looks like a postcard from the different states. Um, 50 stamps. My home state of Alabama, with a picture of our Capitol building. Um, and uh, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Georgia. Each stamp has something specific from the state, like Kentucky has horse racing. Louisiana has um, like a New Orleans sort of thing. Maine has a moose. Minnesota has lakes. Um, Nebraska has the covered wagon like the prairie. Nevada has Vegas. North Carolina has uh, the Wright Brothers plane. Because that's where the Wright Brothers plane was from. South Carolina has beaches. Oklahoma has cattle. South Dakota has bison. Tennessee has music. Texas has the Alamo and Longhorns. Hawaii, beachfront property. Kansas has the sunflowers. Georgia has a peach and a, a plantation home. Florida has a beach. So these stamps just show the, ama the amazing things in the United States. So, anyway, I'm going to put this back, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And this was an update of my stamp collection. And um, I hope you like my channel. So if you haven't subscribed already, and if you like what you see, please uh, subscribe. And... Um, Join my small group of growing fans who uh, like my old school style videos with low production and the kind of things I show. So um, anyway, I hope to get a comment from you and um, until next time, have a good evening. Bye.